channel. It is almost summertime. The solstice is in a couple of days, which means the days are getting longer. The sun is rising earlier and setting way later, which is very confusing for my children. I thought I would post a video for my updated summer skincare routine that I do. Six months ago on my 37th birthday, I posted my skincare routine as someone in their late 30s that has not had any Botox or filler and is trying to age naturally. There are changes I make when the summer months come about when it gets warmer outside. So I did want to post another video just talking about some of the changes that I make. Now it's actually pouring rain here right now. You might be able to hear it, so I'll try to isolate some of the audio so you can't hear the pouring rain. It is nighttime now and my kids are sleeping and I'm ready to start with my night routine. If you're new here, my name is Angeline. I post all kinds of content about wellness, self-care, fitness, and I so appreciate you being here. So without further ado, let's get into this video. Now, the reason you might want to adapt your routine for the seasons is because there can be changes in temperature, in sun exposure, in humidity, and all these things have an impact on our skin and what products we're gonna to wanna to be putting on our skin. Now, I live in a very dry climate. For those of you that have watched my previous videos or my previous skincare video, which I'll take here, you know that I live in Calgary, which is a very dry, dry climate. In the winter time, I'm putting on very heavy moisturizers, facial oils, and I also sleep with a humidifier in my room to help combat some of that dryness. My skin is so dry, just to give you a reference, I actually get dry patches all around my face. I definitely have found a routine that has been able to keep my face moisturized, but I do make slight changes when the summer comes about. In the hotter summer months, and I'm sweating more. I definitely don't wanna be wearing heavy moisturizers, facial oils. Although I do like a natural glow, I don't want my skin to appear too oily. So you probably know already that I don't wear a ton of makeup. I don't usually wear any foundations or anything like that on my face. Usually just a little bit of concealer, blush, mascara. However, you're still gonna to wanna to be double cleansing every night in the summer. Regardless if you're wearing a lot of makeup or not, double cleansing just really helps unclog those pores, but also break down any SPF that you might be wearing. You should be wearing SPF every day. Now, the cleanser that I use from summer to winter doesn't really change, but you are gonna wanna be using some type of cleansing balm or just a light gentle moisturizer in the evening if you're double cleansing, especially if you're gonna be following it up with the retinol. So I'm on my like sixth bottle of this. You can see this one's almost empty. This is my La Roche-Posay Cleansing Micellar Foaming Water. This is what I use for my second cleanse. And then for my first cleanse, I've tried multiple different cleansing balms. The one I'm using right now is the Elf Skin Holy Hydration makeup melting cleansing balm. This one is relatively cheap and that's probably why I've used this one for so long. It does last a while. I kind of just scoop a little bit into my hands and what I'm gonna want to be doing is rubbing that in, breaking down any makeup impurities, SPF on my skin and unclogging those pores. In the summer months, staying hydrated is equally as important as in the winter. It's way harder for me to drink water in the winter time when it's colder out. I like to drink tea, coffee in the summer. Still making sure we're drinking plenty of water, making sure that we're hydrating our skin from the inside out. All right, I'm gonna add a little bit of water to this to emulsify it and then rinse it off. I generally follow the same routine every day. I know it's really common to kind of spread out the days that you're using your acids and your retinols. You have to find what works for your skin. And it took me a while to really hone in on a routine that was gonna work well with my dry skin. And that's what I'm sharing with you today. I'm already feeling quite clean with the cleansing balm. It's nice because my skin doesn't feel stripped of its regular moisture, but I am gonna go in with the La Roche-Posay Micellar Water, which is a really nice foaming cleanser, very gentle. And again, it's not stripping any of the moisture from my skin. And I would like to point out that most of the products that I am using today, you can actually just purchase from a drugstore. I just buy them at the local shoppers drug mart here in Calgary. The, all the elf skin stuff, the Loche Posay stuff, 
it all is available for a decent price point and that's really appealing to me. The next thing I'm gonna do is go in with my retinol. Now I always sandwich my retinol. I make sure that I put a little bit of moisture on my skin first before I put the retinol on so that the retinol isn't in contact with my clean dry skin here. So I am using the Coco Kine Resurrection Polypeptide Cream and I think I'm on my third or fourth jar of this. I was using the Skin FX polypeptide cream, um, the one with peptides in it. I just found it was a higher price point and it was really inconvenient for me because I had to buy it at Sephora. Now the difference between winter and summer is this is a really thick cream. So if you don't have dry skin like I do, you might wanna actually find some lighter weight cream. And I'm actually just going in with a little bit to put a barrier on my skin before I apply the retinol. This helps my skin not react aggressively to the retinol. Just a little bit of moisture there. I didn't feel like, again, the cleanser stripped any of the moisture from my skin, but this just added a little bit of a barrier before I go in with the retinol. And you guys already know, the retinol I use is the retinol serum from La Roche-Posay. It's the V3, it's the red container here. And I'm just going in with a couple drops and I actually do this every night. You're gonna to wanna to build up to using retinol. If you're new to retinol, I would try a beginner retinol. This one I think is quite potent, but I started using it immediately only once a week. And then I moved up to two times a week and then eventually I got to using it every day. And even though I have dry skin, it has worked wonders in the texture of my skin, anti-aging, and I just feel like it gives me a more youthful appearance. So once that is all absorbed, I'm going back in with the same moisturizer. Again, if you don't have dry skin, you might wanna try a lighter weight moisturizer, but this is really just gonna seal it all in. So again, the Coco Kine Polypeptide Moisturizer and applying this all over. Now my winter routine, I would then go in with an actual facial oil on top, something that's going to help seal all of this in and give me that nice glowy glazed donut look before bedtime. But this is sufficient for me in the summer. It is hot, I'm sweating, and I just don't need any additional product clogging my pores. Something else I like to do in the evening, especially if I'm feeling a little bit dry that day, maybe I didn't get enough water or I have a photo shoot the next day, I go in with an eye cream. This is the Banish Instant Lift Eye Cream. You really only need a small, small amount. I'm just gonna place a little bit underneath my eye. Again, nothing too heavy, but I love this eye cream for deep puffing, brightening, and just providing a little bit of extra moisture, like I said, on days where maybe I didn't hit my water goal or if I have a photo shoot the next day and I'm trying to not look so puffy. I go to bed like this, I feel like my skin is hydrated enough to last me through the night and to wake up having you know soft, plump skin, not feeling dried out or feeling like my pores have clogged. Now let's talk a little bit about the morning routine. So when I wake up in the morning, I know a lot of people don't like to cleanse their face in the morning. And I know that's a new trend and I haven't tried it yet. I've always had really great success when I cleanse in the morning. And this is one of the main things I wanna stress here is we are all influenced by each other. We are influenced by TikTok, by Instagram, by YouTube. But just because something works for me doesn't mean it's gonna work for you. If what you're doing right now, your skin is clear, you're feeling healthy, you're feeling youthful, that's great. Do not change anything in your routine. If you're starting to notice breakouts, dryness, puffiness, oiliness, then at that point you might wanna take a step back and think of how you wanna adapt your routine to your specific type of skin. Just because it works for someone else doesn't mean it's gonna work for you. I've seen so many different posts of people who have ruined their skin by just being influenced so much by other influencers, what they're using. With that being said, I cleanse my face every morning. I actually use the La Roche-Posay Salicylic Acid Cleanser every morning. And I know that you should probably limit exfoliating or using these types of acids to a couple times a week. However, again, I've been using salicylic acid since I was a teenager. I think the original like clean and clear product I was using in my teens to clear my acne, I used that for many, many years until I switched. When I switched to a more gentle cleanser because that's what I was influenced to do, I found that my skin was breaking out. I switched back to using a salicylic acid cleanser and that's what I've had major, major success with and I'm gonna continue using it. But something I highly, highly recommend you use or if you're already using it, continue using it is a really good vitamin C. When people stop me wherever I am and ask for my skincare routine, 
I always just say I use a vitamin C in the morning and a retinol at night. And that's all I say because I swear by using vitamin C. I've been using it for many, many years now and I saw the greatest difference in my complexion when I started using vitamin C. I think in my winter video, I was using the Coco Kine vitamin C, but I was finding when I was going to the shopper's record and buying the Coco Kine vitamin C, um, when I opened the bottle, they had all oxidized. And what I mean by that is the vitamin C should be clear and the Coco Kind, when I was opening it up, it was actually kind of a yellow tinged color, which to me means that it had oxidized. That's the reason that I absolutely love the vitamin C I've been using. It is the Banish vitamin C. So not only does it have the benefits of vitamin C, it actually has vitamin E in it as well, which is great for acne scarring. Now I don't have a lot of dark spots or acne scarring, but I've still noticed a huge difference in evening of my complexion. And you can see here that this comes in a dark bottle, so it is less likely to oxidize. And I mean, this product's almost done. I've used it so much. It is kind of that clear fluid. I highly recommend it every single day going in with the Banish Serum. So adding a couple drops, pressing it into my skin, all you need. This tiny bottle has lasted me a long time and I'm definitely gonna have to go back and get more. And you already know you have to be finishing with a SPF. Now, in the winter time, you likely would use a moisturizer and then put an SPF over top. In the summertime, like I said, you don't want anything heavy, so I strongly recommend just going in with a light SPF. If you're only using maybe like a 15 or 30, I recommend actually upping the SPF because of the additional sun exposure and UV rays that we are exposed to in the summertime. You already know my tried and true the Laneige Hydro UV Defense Sunscreen, and this is a 50 plus. It, I've been using it forever, and this is the only product that I use that I have to get at Sephora. It does not leave a white cast for those of you that have brown or dark skin, which is a huge bonus for me. I don't want to be walking around like Casper, so highly recommend trying out that Laneige sunscreen. Um, maybe slightly higher price point, but like I said, it takes the place of my SPF and my moisturizer, so I definitely think it's worth it. And then, you know, I always just wait for the sales at Sephora, and then I kind of stock up on a couple, so I have them on hand. Very, very important to be reapplying throughout the day. I try to avoid any type of spray sunscreen because you will not get an even coverage or as much sunscreen as you need. Always kind of opting for creams, lotions, so that you can get an even coating as well as being able to have control of where you're putting it. And I also want to stress that you don't need to be using a ridiculous amount of products. So a cleanser, a retinol, and a moisturizer at night, a cleanser, a vitamin C serum, and SPF in the morning, that's all you need. It doesn't have to break the bank, doesn't need to be taking over your countertops. Something simple and effective is all you need. Again, try not to be influenced by all the different type of products coming on the market. Many that are just marketed and fancy packages and higher price points, trending on TikTok. You don't need all of those products. I decided to do a bathroom renovation, which means I need to clear everything out of my bathroom so that they can start demoing it. And the amount of products that I found that I threw in the garbage because I no longer need was insane. And I'm sure, I know I'm not the only one. I know you have that hidden drawer or underneath your bathroom sink, you have a bunch of products that you hold on to even though you're never gonna use them. Just goes to show that, you know, the six products that I have, the limited makeup that I have, you don't need to have a lot of stuff. So I am very excited for the bathroom renovation, mainly because I was able to cleanse myself of all of these different products that I thought I needed and actually don't. And just a reminder that skincare products have a shelf life. So don't be buying a bunch of products and then storing half empties, thinking that you are going to use it at a later date. Usually different type of skincare products, especially ones with acids in them, they expire after a short period of time. I don't know if you can see that, but on the bottom of this La Roche-Posay cleanser, there's a little open jar here and it says 12 months on it, meaning that once you open this, it is only good for 12 months. So there's no point keeping things for years and years. Find something you love, use it all, recycle the containers, buy it again. 
if something's working for you, there's no point in trying different brands, different styles. Do what works for you. And I can't stress this enough, especially in the summertime, wash your face every night before you go to bed. In the summer, you might sweat a lot throughout the day and this just sits on your skin. The bacteria sits on your skin. If you're not washing your face, you're transferring it to your pillow. So just wash your face every single night. It makes a huge difference. By making these small adjustments, you can help your skin to be healthy and radiant throughout the summertime. Thank you so much for tuning in and watching my video. If you have any other summer tips for skincare, please drop them down below so we can start a conversation. I'm so curious to know what changes you make to your skincare routine in the summer months. Again, I so appreciate you being here. If this type of content excites you, be sure to like and subscribe. I have much more content coming your way and I hope you have a great day. Bye for now.